Hello and welcome to another video. In this one I'm going to be talking about apt-get and the correct way to use it in Docker, uh, specifically when you're installing packages for Debian or Ubuntu-like systems. Um, and I'm going to go over the wrong way to do it, why it's the wrong way to do it, and then show you the, the correct way to do it. Uh, so let's jump into it. Okay, so to get started, I have pre I've done a little prep work for this. <laughs> I have a Docker file um, that installs, you know, runs app get update and then installs a package with dash y dash dash no install recommends. I'll go over what these flags are in a minute, um, but I just wanted to say like, you know, this is this is an example of how not to do it. So don't follow this example, but I'm gonna show you why it's wrong. Um, and it does work, unfortunately. So if we go and run, um, let's see, I'm actually using Podman here, um, but anywhere you see Podman, you can use Docker instead. Um, so I'm going to build this image, docker build dash t this dot. Um, I have docker symlink to podman, so that's why it still works when I type docker. Uh, but you'll see, you know, I can build this image. And if I do docker run rmti this bash, and I, you know, echo hi, or you do python 3 dash version, uh, you know, we were able to install Python 3 and it looks like this works. So you might, you know, ship this off to production and, you know, go on your merry way. Um, but then when you go to modify this later, you might find some breakages. Um, and I'll also show you another reason, like this is inefficient and we'll, we'll show that in a second as well. Um, but it does work. And that's kind of the unfortunate part about, you know, apt-get here and that you can do it incorrectly and still end up with a working result. Um, uh, but let's say that I came along here and I added another package. Um, I'm particularly picking this one, uh, because it is a security sensitive package in Ubuntu. Um, lib glib 2.0-0. Don't, don't worry about the particular package or what it does. Um, I picked it just so I can show you a particular bug with this. Um, so let's say I wanted to add this other package and then I was going to rebuild again. So we're doing docker build. Um, and we run this now. We'll chug along for a little bit. Uh, but then we'll get an error. We get an error that says failed to fetch this package at this version 404 not found. And the reason for this is, um, and if we actually scroll back through the, the build log, we can actually see the exact reason for this. Um, the second step here, this apt get update step was separate from the install step. So Docker was able to cache this separately. And you know, this is actually from when I built this image the first time a couple weeks ago. I, uh, <laughs> I've been prepping this video for a couple of weeks because I was waiting for a security announcement to happen on, on Ubuntu so that I could do this. In fact, here's here's the security announcement that it was that was the reason why I picked that package. Um, and so what happened here is the cached apt metadata uh, was out of date. And so it was trying to download the old version of the package. Uh, however, when Ubuntu, and I think Debian also does this too, when they get a security issue in a package, they upload the new package and then they pull the old package so you can't install the vulnerable version. Um, and so that's that's what we're seeing here. So this 404 is because, you know, we got a, we got a cached out of date version. And the usual way to fix, you know, out of date stuff is to make sure that everything that needs to be, you know, fresh is all in the same line. So you'll go through and, you know, combine these two lines. Um, and so that's kind of the first step on making this correct. And now if, now if we run this again, you'll see that it succeeds on installing both of those packages. Um, and it's actually going to take a while because it has to install the whole dev suite as well. Um, but if we we let this go through, you'll see that we eventually get, you know, libglib 2.0 got installed properly, and we didn't get that same 404 error as before. Now, this is closer to the correct final result, but it's not quite there yet. Um, what we actually need to do, uh, so this, this will install properly. There are a few things that this can do incorrectly. Um, and the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to redo the syntax here. So it looks a little bit nicer. I actually go over this in another video. I will link that in the description. I actually talk about apt-get in another video as well. So I will link that in the description as well. Um, but I'm going to do this sort of ampersands first, um, syntax here. This allows me to kind of have, you know, the equivalent of trailing commas, but in a uh, in a Docker file, and we're gonna add you know and, and colon at the end, so that way we're only editing commands in the middle, and you know if we add or remove a line, it's not gonna cause us to have to reflow everything else. Uh, but we're gonna actually add two more commands and an environment variable here. The first one is the environment variable Debian front end equals non interactive. 
now what this does is it tells any Debian packages that are installing that they shouldn't pop up in interactive dialogue to confirm things. Uh, this is for things like, you know, time zone configuration or, you know, MySQL root passwords or like all that sort of stuff. We're saying, no, no, this is a build system. There isn't a human sitting at the computer, so don't prompt me for it. Just assume no or assume, assume the default value for everything that's set there. Um, otherwise, you know, depending on your build system, it could just get stuck there waiting for a prompt and you, you really don't want that. Um, in addition to saying non-interactive, we also pass dash Y. This is assume yes to all prompts. Uh, and it kind of goes along the same lines as this non-interactive thing here. Uh, the last bit, and this is a, you know, a bit of a personal preference from, you know, working in, in Docker itself is to use no install recommends. This will limit packages to just their normal dependencies and it won't install optional dependencies that you probably would want most of the time using them. Uh, but in Docker, you kind of want to shrink things down and have the smallest deliverable possible. And so that's what this uh, no install recommends is. Uh, we're also going to add two other lines here. Uh, one of them is optional. I find that uh, most public images already have this turned on, so you don't really need to do this. Uh, but if you're rolling your own Debian or Ubuntu images, you might need this. And that's apt-get clean. Uh, this will clean up some metadata. However, most are configured to do that automatically, so you don't need to do that yourself. And the other one is rm rf var lib apt apt slash list slash star. And this is just one that I, I copy paste. Actually, let me double check and make sure that's the right one. Pregment ci. Uh, where is that going to be? Actually, pregment probably. Um, zip that. No testing. Zip that. Block file. Yeah. So we we have that same line here. Um, and again, you'll see this this same little thing here. I actually kind of leave out the last one because I find that it's not super useful. But anyway. Um, this is again some temporary data that app stores while it's doing some computation and you just want to make sure that this gets cleaned up so you don't have junk in your image at the end. And so putting all that together, let's uh, build this again and we're going to compare the disk size of these. Um, and this, this clean and this RMRF is actually going to save us a bunch of disk size over that original image that I started with that had, you know, apt metadata chilling out in the Docker image. So we should get, you know, a few megabytes smaller. Um, and with, with Docker images, you can, you know, if you imagine your network connection is, you know, one megabyte per second, you know, one, one to three megabytes is gonna add one to three seconds to your pull time. Um, and you probably don't want that. So let's do Docker images dash A. We should see an anonymous image from nine days ago, which I believe is this one here. Uh, let's actually make this a little bit larger because it's off screen. Yeah, so you can see, um, well, this is the one from three minutes ago. We can actually go off of that one. So we went from 208 megabytes down to 181 megabytes. So we saved almost, what, 27 megabytes uh, just by purging the apt information. Um, and that, that makes a pretty big difference. That's, you know, more than 10% of the image size here. Um, and with without the, you know, without combining that all into one step and purging the data at the end, uh, you end up with a bunch of extraneous stuff there. But anyway, to wrap up, there's there's kind of two reasons that you would want to do this in all in one line. Uh, one is for, you know, correctness. You're not going to have problems when you have stale apt metadata. Uh, and the other is for space. Like you want to have as small of an image as possible and eliminate all the, the crap that you get from there. But anyway, hopefully this was helpful. If you have additional things you would like me to explain, leave a comment below or reach out to me on the various platforms. But thank you all for watching and I will see you in the next one.